Before we start this video, a large thank you to Wong, a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend. Mr. Domino, Chris, and Orca for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody, and today we're going to begin refactoring our AI for netcode. But before we do that, we have to make a way to spawn them efficiently uh, using the netcode rules. So let's start by making an empty game object. I'm going to call it World AI Manager. I'm going to drag up to the top here with our other world managers, and then I'm going to add a script to it. I'm going to call it World AI Manager. So this essentially is going to handle spawning in all the characters when you enter the scene. And if you want, you can modify it too. So it's by area. So you can despawn ones that aren't being used and respawn ones that are being used. I'm then going to make a script called AI Spawn. This is going to be a scriptable object. And it's just going to act as like a, uh, a shell for some stuff we want to keep track of when we spawn a character. So I'm going to make this derive from a scriptable object. And I'm going to create an asset menu name up here. I'm just going to say AI uh, slash spawn. And this just means like it is a spawner for an AI. So this is going to house a character and a spawn position and rotation and some other stuff in the future if you want to add on to it. Perfectly easy to do so. So let's say you want to spawn a character dead or spawn enforcing animation, etc., etc. This would be the place to do it. So let's make a header for character info. And then we're just going to say uh, a game object as in the character we need to spawn. A vector 3 for the spawn position and a vector 3 for the spawn rotation. And that's all you really need to get started. But like I said, you could add a bunch of things here. So you could make it so they ignore gravity when they spawn. You can make it so you force an animation on them when they spawn, um, et cetera, et cetera. You could have that under spawn info. You could force a state when they spawn. This will be a good place to do all that stuff. So you can make some comments here if you want to do that. I won't get into it right now because it's not important. We'll get the, uh, the key features out of the way. So we'll just get the spawn into the scene at a position and a rotation. So right below that, we need to keep track of a couple of lists. So I'm going to make a header. I'm just going to call this spawned model. Uh, and I'm going to make a game object for the instantiated model. And we need this um, because we need a way to despawn it too, if you want to. So with Nephilim, for example, when you leave one area, all the AI despawn. When you enter another area, they all spawn. So you don't have too many on the go at one time, taking up too much memory. So I'm going to make two uh, voids here, attempt to spawn character and attempt to despawn character. And as I just said before, we're going to need two lists. One is for the characters you want to spawn, and one is for the spawn in characters. You keep the spawn in characters, so you can reference ones that are still active in the scene, and uh, for whenever you want to despawn them again. So I'm going to say under attempt to spawn character here, if character does not equal null, we're going to instantiate the character model, and we're going to equal that to the instantiated model. So the instantiated model is equal to an instantiated copy of the character model we supply. And I realized I just forgot to put in my namespace this whole time. So that's why I can't use my AI character manager variable. Now we're going to get the AI character manager, we're going to call it AI character, and we're going to equal it to the instantiated model dot get component AI character manager. Next, we're going to spawn this on the network. So we're going to say instantiated model dot get component network object. And I just realized I'm not using my netcode library. So I'm going to say using unity dot netcode. And it's very easy to do this. You want to make sure you're only running this on the server, by the way, but we'll get to that in the future. So I'm just going to come down here and move this so it's not giving an error. We're going to say get component dot network object. Then we're going to say dot spawn and that's all you need to do to spawn it on the network so this line of code here will spawn it okay so right below that we're going to set the transform and uh, the transfer position and the rotation by saying instantiated model dot transform dot position equals spawn position instantiated model dot transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot euler and then pass the spawn rotation x y and Z. And there you go, you're good to go. And this will spawn in the model, it will set it to that exact position. And then it will set its rotation to the rotation you have supplied here. So the idea here is that you will probably set up some models in game in your scene, uh, to get an idea where you want to place them, and you can copy their position and rotation to the scriptable object and delete them from the scene. So we're going to say if the AI character does not equal null, just to be safe, we want to 
make sure our animator is getting root motion. So we're going to say animator or AI character dot get component animator dot is using root motion is equal to true. Um, you don't have to do this, but where our enemy movement is 100% root motion based, I'm going to make sure this is true. Okay. Now we have the ability to spawn a character. What if you want to despawn a character? It's very easy. It's just one line of code. We're going to say if the instantiated model is not equal null, well, I guess it's a couple line of codes if you open up some curly braces. We're going to say instantiated model dot get component network object dot despawn. So this both removes it from the network and destroys the game object. Okay, now we have a shell to spawn and despawn characters. We need to set them all up on the AI manager so that we can just basically iterate through lists of these now, as I was saying earlier, and spawn them into the world. So we're going to put the list here on this. This obviously makes the most sense. So think, think of the AI spawn as just a spawn slot. And think of this as the manager that holds every spawn slot in your scene. So this is going to house every possible AI spawn you have in your world. So I'm going to make a header for AI spawns. And then a serializable field here for a list of AI spawns. And we can call this, I'm just going to call area 00 characters because this implies that, or arrow 00 spawns, this implies that you have multiple areas. And what you want to do is when you leave an area, maybe you can use a non-trigger exit or non-trigger enter, you want to despawn all the other areas and that will save you a lot of memory. So I'm going to make a hide in inspector. Actually, we don't need that. We just need the one list for now and then the spawn in characters list. So I'm going to make a uh, you can make this serializable field as well. It doesn't need to be public right now. A list of AI spawns. And we can call this spawn in characters. And this will be all the characters you have actively spawned in right this moment. So it will never consist of every character you have in the game, just the ones that are currently active in the scene right now. Now we can go ahead and make an awake and a start method. And on awake, I'm going to say spawn in characters equals new list AI spawn. And I'm going to make a public static world AI manager instance as in a singleton. And before I make that list, I'm going to say if instance is equal to null, instance is equal to this, else destroy this game object. There should never be two of these in the scene, only one at a time. You want this in your world scene, not your main menu scene, obviously, wherever you have your actual world uh, and gameplay taking place. So right below that now, below the spawning characters, I'm going to say for each. And actually, you know what? We don't need to make a for each loop. We can actually give this its own function just to make it a bit more clean. And if you want to add any logic inside of that there too, you can do that. So you could just make a for each loop here and spawn all of your characters by iterating through the list. But instead, let's make a start function. And then let's make a function to also spawn in these characters. So make a private void spawn in all characters. And like I said, you would want to do this by area if you have a lot of characters and a lot of areas. But because we only have the one area, I'm just going to do everything here in area 00. So for each character in area 00 spawns, we want to say character. And remember referencing the AI spawn now, dot attempt to spawn character. And that's it. It's that simple. Now you can call this on start. And if you want to do some other logic in there too while you're spawning each character, then you can kind of implement that inside the for each loop or you can go into the attempt spawn character function itself. So next down here, we're going to basically add a public void for add spawn characters to active character list. And we're going to make it require an AI character manager. I'm going to call that AI character. And then inside of this, we're just going to basically say uh, spawning characters dot add AI character. That's it. We also should check the list for iterations of null. So we're going to do that as well. Um, so I'm just going to say AI character. Why is this giving me an error? Mm, oh, I, this should be AI character manager, not AI spawn on spawning characters. That's my bad. Yeah, so if you're constantly adding and removing from this list, you want to check for nulls. Um, otherwise, the list will have empty slots with no character in it, and that will be a null slot. So basically, any empty slot that has nothing in it. You just want to remove that slot from the list altogether. We can do that by saying for loop here. We can say int i is equal to spawn in characters dot count minus one. If i is greater than minus one, i minus minus. And then we could say if spawn in characters i is equal to null, then we're going to say spawn in characters dot remove at i. And this just removes the entry in the list.
Okay, now we can call this on attempt to spawn character if the AI does not equal null, because then we know we've spawned an AI character successfully. So we can say add spawn character to active characters list, and we reference this by saying world AI manager dot instance, and then we open up some brackets here and pass the AI character that is not null, and then we save it. Now this should work. So let's actually make a character. But first, let's go to the AI character manager and make sure they have an ID because we're going to do one more thing. So you might want to reference a specific AI in your scene. You're going to want to definitely if you further along development for specific reasons. Um, so each one should have their own unique ID. So I'm just going to make a header here and call this AI ID or AI character ID. Now, if you want, you can use a string or uh, an int. Since this project is very simple, I'm only going to use an int. But for Nephilim, for example, I use strings um, because there's different versions of a lot of AI. So like there's undead great X, undead, you know, et cetera, weapon, undead sleeping. So you get what I'm saying. Numbers will be a bit more confusing there, but I'm going to use an int because this project is very, very simple. And to do this, we're going to say public AI character manager. We're going to say get AI character by ID. We're going to make this require an int and we're going to call it ID. Now, in order to do this, you might remember how we done this with our item weapon, our weapon item database. We're going to say using system.link. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but it's L-I-N-Q. And then down here, we're actually able to use some of the functionality now from that library. So we can say, um, we're going to reference our spawn in characters list. So you can only get a character if they're spawned in. Return spawn in characters, first or default, spawn in character, equals or greater than spawn in character dot AI character ID. So if you wanted to, you could spawn in every character when your game starts and then just enable or disable the game objects as you get into the proper areas. That way you could always reference that character um, or you could just delete them and spawn them in as you change areas. Entirely up to you, both approaches are valid. So I'm going to create a new AI spawner now and I'm just gonna call this AI spawn underscore zero zero. And I think we have a character prefab here. It's probably old, might be broken. Let me see. If not, I'll just save the one that's in the scene here disabled. But you should have an AI character prefab. Yes, I see I have one right here now, AI characters. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that this is on the network manager spawn object list. So go to your world network manager, go to your spawn, your network prefabs here, add one, and make sure this is on that prefab list. Otherwise, you will get an error when you're trying to do network spawn because it's not a recognized prefab. Next, go to your spawn here and add the prefab from your project to this. It's important you do not add the prefab from your scene. It will not work. It needs to be the direct prefab from your project because that's the prefab that's referenced in your network manager. That's very important. So next, create an empty game object here. Or you can use some kind of, uh, it's probably better to use a piece of art here or a character so you can really see where they're going to be and get some actual reference for position. An empty game object is kind of hard to see. You don't really know when it's exactly touching the floor. So but I'm just going to. Shake this out real quick. That looks pretty good to me. I'll lower it a bit more. So then what you wanna do once you have a, an area for it is copy the position and then go to your um, your main descriptable object. I should probably lock my inspector so it stops leaving. So era, area or AI spawn underscore zero zero, right click, paste the position, right click, copy Euler angles, and then right click, paste the rotation. So that should work as intended. We're gonna go ahead and test that now in a moment. I'm gonna to go to my world AI manager and add into my area zero zero spawns, this one spawn that we have. So I'm gonna save the scene. Now I'm gonna go back to my main menu, start the game. I'm gonna full screen it, new game. And now this should be working. So we're gonna go over to the scene and yes, he is spawn that is working as intended, but we have some work to do because obviously since the netcoder factor, a lot of things are different and he's not really in a working state right now. So in the next video, we're going to begin refactoring our AI and we're going to get them up to a working speed with multiplayer. So then you can connect with a friend and you can actually fight some AI. And then we'll sync boss events, including the fog walls, and then we'll sync the bosses last. And that will be everything you have in need for a nice little multiplayer experience. Thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.